everyone. Welcome back to my channel. This is Prepping by Faith. And today I wanted to share some information with you guys coming from the Daily Meal. And they are talking about 13 food shortages that we should expect in 23. So I wanted to just go ahead and get right into this. So the first one that they are discussing is beef. So they talk about the devastating drought that took place in Texas, which is responsible for 14% of the U.S. beef supply, which led um, to a lack of grass feed for cows. And, you know, the alternative feeds were too expensive. So they ended up culling these cows early, which we know about, right? So we had this sort of glut of meat supply that went on the market, which is what we talked about last year. Um, and I remember mentioning this to you guys, that if you enjoyed eating beef, that you wanted to make sure that you were prioritizing that, that you were stocking up on that. So that is something to consider. Um, it's going to lead to a nationwide shortage of beef all the way around, which is just going to drive those prices up even higher, right? And a lot of us are struggling as it is now to try to figure out um, ways to reduce those grocery costs. So um, if you enjoy your beef, I would, you know, get, if you find that stuff on sale at all, be stocking it in your freezers. Um, in addition to your freezers, you're going to want to go ahead and pressure can some. If you're not comfortable with that, Keystone is a great alternative. That is one that I have heavily stocked up on. They do have the ground beef and they also have the shredded beef. And those dates on those cans, guys, are good at least five years out. And then I would imagine, I mean, you can go you know, beyond that date, but that is the, the printed date that the manufacturer is putting on there. So, you know, you have at least five years to consume that product. So be thinking about this and stocking up on this, if this is something that you eat. Number two is lettuce. So lettuce actually got kind of a double blow to it from what I could understand. Um, there is um, a situation where they say um, there was twofold, you know, the weather was impacting the ability for it to grow, but then they also had these plant diseases, right? So they had something called impatience necrotic spot virus, which is called INSV, and that is an insect called thrips that introduces a disease to lettuce crops. So it manifests as spotting and discoloration, so they can't um, sell that. And then after that, usually followed by that is something called pythium wilt, which makes the lettuce sort of saggy and unpalatable and unsellable. So they're seeing that. Um, that's going to mean a lot less lettuce available. So if you guys enjoy your lettuce, I would suggest, you know, working that into your plans as far as, you know, your gardening, making sure you have that ready. There are also lots of hydroponic type options where you can grow your lettuce indoors. So I would look into those as well. Um, you know, you can create these lettuce towers and all sorts of different things um, where you can grow that and harvest that right inside your home. And I know that um, Alpine Preparedness has shown a lot of her indoor growing. That's a great channel to check out if you're interested in learning more about that. Um, number three on the list, guys, is beer. So they say that this one is because of, you know, back to the C-19 pandemic, um, as millions shifted to drinking beer at home instead of at bars, that created this sort of demand and need for aluminum that blew up. Um, and then also the pet adoption rates had increased, which caused a shortage in, you know, all of the canned pet foods. I'm still seeing that, guys. They have still eliminated a lot of those different foods that are available for your pets. So I would add, you know, canned pet food to that list as well. So be thinking about anything that is using aluminum that you use on a regular basis to be stocking up on. On, um, you know, sodas, I would think would fall into this category as well. Um, those dates on those soda cans go way beyond if that's something that you're unaware of. I haven't had any issues where I've drank sodas that were way past a date and that carbonation was still in there. Um, that aluminum contains that a lot better than those plastic bottles. So be thinking about that if that's something you're interested in stocking up on, because at a minimum, we know that not only will there be shortages, but the prices are just going to continue to rise. I would go ahead um, and add aluminum foil to this as well. So be stocking up heavily on your aluminum foil. There's so many good uses for that as a prepper. You know, um, you can use it to sort of EMP protect different devices if you wrap that, you know, in several layers. Um, some people disagree with me on that one, but it's something that we do. Um, and according to research I've done previously, it should work. Um, so as you're sort of creating your own Faraday cage, obviously you can use it for cooking, you know, making yourself foil packets for your food, especially to throw on a grill. Um, it's excellent for that. Um, and also, you know, saving food and things like that for later for leftovers. So there's plenty of different uses for aluminum foil. 
I'm not going to go into all of that. Number four is champagne. So that's another one that they said um, because of the, the lockdowns, we had a situation where the um, the beverage dropped by 18%. And then now it's, you know, sort of back on the rise again. But it's one of those situations where the demand is outpacing the supply. And they also talked about the fact that weather problems also played a role in the champagne shortage back in 21. A heat wave um, caused this unseasonal period of frost. Um, they said there was a heat wave. And then following that was an unseasonable um, period of frost that destroyed a lot of the grapevines. So that created, um, and then there was higher us than usual levels of rain in the summer that created this devastating mildew. So there was a lot of issues with the grapes in that um, Champagne district. So be thinking about that if that's something that you do enjoy. Um, obviously, that's kind of one of those items that goes, you know, years and years out. So that would be something to stock up on. Number five is oranges. So according to the Florida Department of Citrus, this is one of the, you know, world's most prolific regions for growing oranges and producing orange juice. And we know that, right? But they had an issues um, last year in 2022, where Hurricane Ian and Tropical Storm Nicole brought all of these high winds and torrential rains, and they just destroyed a lot of that Florida orange crop. So that has caused this sort of um, led to a production and decline and issues in Florida are the biggest cause of this shortage. So um, in October 22 to September 23 season, Florida farmers are expected to produce 20 million boxes of the fruit, which is 51% less than the previous season, guys. That's huge. So that's like pretty much cut in half. Um, so that is going to be the biggest drop since 1913, they said. So if you enjoy um, things like, you know, um, orange juice, you can get the, the condensed cans that are in the freezer section. You could put that in your freezers. That would be um, an option for you. Um, um, there are drink substitutes, you know, oranges is just one of those things where it's going to be, you know, kind of hard to sort of stock up on that. Right. But, you know, I would, I would stick to maybe the more of the condensed frozen and having a bunch of those in my freezer, they're not going to take up a lot of space. So um, be thinking about that. You could also get some of those little mandarin oranges that are in the, um, the cans. So you can get some of those canned oranges. They're not going to be as good as fresh, but they are an option. Number six, cooking oil. So this is another one that we've talked heavily about um, last year. We were experiencing shortages last year, so it's going to continue. And a lot of that is because of all of these that are grown over in the Russian-Ukraine region and the consistent conflict that they've had has just continue to deplete that and make these um, higher um, prices, issues with exports. So they say also in Indonesia, there's an issue with, you know, their production of palm oil, and they temporarily banned the exports of the product in April of 22. And they said that that is also um, the Indonesian government cut that ratio down to one ton, staying at home for every six exported. So that makes a 25% decrease in palm oil shipments. So all of your oils, guys, I would be prioritizing any of your cooking oils. Now, those printed dates on there are usually good. Um, the expiration dates will say at least two years out. So, you know, you can come comfortably store two years worth of oil that you use. Just make sure you're storing it in a cool, dark, dry place. Um, you want it away from sunlight. So that's something to consider. Um, butter, number seven is butter. So they're saying that we're seeing this. We've we've already seen the inflation taking off, especially in dairy. Um, anything to do with dairy is just um, going through the roof. So this is one where they say um, um, less work means less milk, which means less butter, right? So they say there was a range of issues for this. So um, specifically due to this lengthy labor shortage in the dairy farm sector, which I'm guessing is just more because of the... Um, 2020 issues they're going to blame it on, right? I guess we're just going to be stuck with these 2020 issues for the next decade because this is what continues to get blamed. You would think at some point we could kind of start pulling this you know, back up out of the, the ditch here in the trenches, but this is what they continue to refer to. So um, they're talking about this butter and with butter guys, that's one of the things that I've mentioned frequently on my channel. Um, you can freeze it for up to a year safely. You don't have to do anything special with it. Just leave it in the boxes, stick it in your freezer. You're good to go. If you're running out of room there, um, I would suggest learning how to make ghee or purchase some ghee. They do have shelf-stable ghee that you, you can purchase in stores. Um, that's actually something that I'm going to be doing 
pretty soon. I'm not going to put a video out on that because so it's been covered so many times, but I am going to be making some, and I will give you one tip. I have heard that the um, Kirkland brand butter, which comes from Costco, is supposed to be one of the better ones to use because it has less water content. So that's what I'm going to be doing. There are also um, butter, um, powdered buttered options that you can purchase as well. Sort of those freeze dried, you know, powder substitutes. Augustin Farms has one. I'm going to be doing a review of that product here soon. Number eight is corn. So corn is one of those, you know, that is used in a lot of things as well to make oil, the high fructose corn syrups, you know, canned or it's sold fresh. Obviously it's used to also feed our animals, which I don't remember them, you know, touching on in here, but I think that's important to note as well. Um, so they're saying that um, in 2022, according to the USDA, farmers were set to plant 89 and a half million acres of crops, about 4% less than they had in 21. And that means that corn farms were set to produce 3.7 million fewer acres of this crop, which is going to make a dent in the overall supply. So stocking up on anything corn related would be a good idea. Um, in addition to, you know, canned corn, I would also consider things like your corn meals, um, especially especially, you know, if there's, you know, corn type flours that you like to use to make homemade um, corn tortillas, just understand that these are things that you can do to sort of mitigate um, those issues, those shortages and those extra costs. Number nine are eggs. And we've all seen this one, right? I paid, I think it was $6 just for a 12 count of large eggs from Walmart. Um, it's ungodly how much these eggs are going up in price. So, you know, um, this is one of those things that they say, um, obviously, they're they're blaming on the avian flu. So they're talking a lot about the culling of these birds and how that has significantly impacted the um, eggs and the egg prices. So I would, um, I would consider Obviously, um, you can freeze these. That is something that you can do for up to a year. I have frozen them, you know, separate. I've done a video on that before where you can sort of, you know, freeze them just in whole eggs in, or you can go ahead and you can scramble those if you're going to be, you know, making scrambled eggs out of them or using them in a recipe. So there's many different ways that you can do that. Um, there's obviously also the, um, the powdered egg substitutes that you can get as well. So if eggs are a thing that you guys, you know, have used in your diet heavily and you use them to bake with and other things, then you're going to want to pay attention to this one and figure that one out and get stocked up. I know not all of us can own chickens depending on where we live. So that's not always going to be an option, but you know, stashing some of these away is an option. So I would do that. I don't see the prices coming down. In fact, they're probably going to continue to rise. Number 10 are tomatoes. So they say that this is because um, in 21, they say a third of the nation's vegetables and 75% of its fruit and nuts came from the golden state of California, but we had issues obviously in California, the driest three-year period in recorded in history, which has reduced the ability for tomatoes. They say this lack of rain um, is particularly terrible for tomato farmers. Um, so forecast dropped by 2% over the 21 yield, which could lead to way less tomatoes available in 23. Um, and then of course, you guys have to also consider not just tomatoes themselves, but also the different products that are made from them, like your ketchups, um, your sauces, um, you know, those are things to consider as well to be stocking up on. So, you know, you can grow some of these at at home, but you can also go ahead and stock up on all the canned varieties and your pasta sauces and your ketchup and things like that. Number 11 is bread. So they're talking about this because, you know, uh, again, hearkening back to the Russian Ukraine um, situation that's still going on. Um, they have, they produce about 20% of the world's cereal grain production, namely wheat, which comes from these countries. So that is causing um, a shortage in our wheat supply. And it could take, it says that exports resumed in November of 22, but that's going to take time to catch up and return to pre-war levels. So they're saying that that is going to be an issue. Um, there, of course, they're going to blame climate change as well. So, you know, understanding that, you know, wheat is a huge component of a lot of things that we use, right? Um, our flour to make our breads, but also, like they mentioned, the cereals um, and other things that we're going to have to consider other products that we use. So be thinking about um, bread. And if you're going to be making, you know, bread at home, you need to consider the fact that you're also going to need other components with that. You're going to need yeast, right? So think about your yeast, your salt, um, sugar, all those sorts of things that you're going to need to, to make that loaf of bread. So an oil. Number 12, olive oil. So 
they're talking in here. I don't know why they didn't just go ahead and group this with the canola, but olive oil is number 12 on their list. So going back to that, they're talking about how Italy, 12% um, of the world's olive supply is produced, was infected. Um, they had a xylella um, infected a solid third of the area's 60 million olive trees, making the fruit unusable before completely killing the tree itself, which um, this was back in 21. And they said the bacteria is the cause of a 50 to 70 percent olive oil uh, production reduction since it took hold. And they say that is going to last well beyond 2023. So, you know, be thinking about that. They say that there is also um, an expected um, heat wave in Spain that could also cause further issues in the olive um, production department. So olive oil, this is one that I use regularly. So I have stocked up heavily on, on this in my preps. And the last one, guys, is infant formula. And we already knew about this one, right? This is sort of an ongoing issue. So um, back in May of 22, this full shortage was in effect. And a lot of that was because of Abbott. We know about that situation where they had temporarily halted the production because of this massive recall and this bacteria. Um, so we're still seeing this issue. So the shortage, while not in such a critical state as it was earlier in the year, continued through 22. And it's likely going to remain in effect until the middle of 23. So um, this is one that you, know, you want to pay attention to. Baby formula is important, so making sure you have plenty of that stocked up as well. So this kind of wraps up the list, guys. I just wanted to share this with you guys real quick. I think it's important that we pay attention to these things. We understand what's coming so that we can be better prepared. We can um, have sort of a, a heads up as to what is taking place and know which items are going to be more disrupted and kind of what we can do to combat that. So if you guys have enjoyed this video today, please give me a like, share, and subscribe. And remember to pray, prep, and put God first. God bless.